Okay, uh, volumes of revolutions. Use calculus to find the exact volumes of solid generated when following the curves of uh, 360 through the x-axis between the given limits. So what y equals a line x power 4. Um, if I want to do a volume of a revolution, I need to square it and then times it by pi. Um, 9 squared is 81. Uh, x to the power of 4 squared, x to the power of 8 above pi. And I've just got to integrate this. I'm going to bring my pi out. So we've got 81 x to the power of um, 8. Uh, for the limit of uh, 0 and 1. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, so if I do that, um, I add 1 and divide it. So it's going to be x to the power of 9. 9 divided by 81 is a 9. Uh, pi to the limit of 0 and 1. Okay, and I substitute my values in. Um, I'm not really going to bother with zero because I know zero. So I'm actually just left with uh, nine pi. Okay, the second one is a uh, 12x uh, minus uh, 5x squared. So the same thing, uh, 12x minus 5x squared. I have to square them and times it by pi uh, before I get my um, limits going. To integrate this between the numbers of uh, 2 and 0, like it says in the question. Uh, so to integrate this, I've got to do 12x minus 5x squared. I've got to square it, 12x minus 5x squared. Okay, uh, 12 times 12x is 144x squared. Um, 12 times minus 5x is minus 60, <coughs> so it's x squared. Uh, so it's going to be x to the power of 3. And that's going to happen again, because I'm using my minus 5 times 12, which makes me another minus 60 x cubed. Minus 5x squared times minus 5x squared is a positive 25x4. And it's got 144 minus 120x cubed. Um, minus, oh, plus 25x to the power of 4. So I have to integrate all of these from 2 to 0. I've taken pi out for there. Um, so remember with uh, all x squared. With integration, we add one and then uh, divide it. Uh, so I've got x3 cubed, uh, 144 divided by 3. 48. And then uh, that's going to be x to the power of 4. So we'll do 120 divided by 4. Which 30. Uh, that was a minus. It's going to be x to the power of 5. Uh, 25 divided by 5 is 5. I'm going to have to do this limit of 2 and 0. I'll pi it. Uh, same as before, I can't bother to put 0 in because all of that equals 0. So I'm going to put 2 in. So we'll 48 times 2 cubed minus 30 times 2 to the power 4 plus 5 times 2 to the power 5. I'm just going to type all that into my calculator. So what have I got? I've got 48 times 2 to the power of 3 minus 30 times. Oh, sorry. <laughs> minus 30 times 2 to the power of 4 plus 5 times plus 5 times 2 to the power of 5 oh, brilliant now I put my 3 in I get 64 so my answer is going to be 64 and uh, let's not forget about the 5 pi that we took out last and uh, my last question that we got is Uh, y squared minus x squared equals x cubed. And uh, so I need to make this into y equals something. So I need to bring my x over to make it y squared equals x cubed minus x squared. And then I'm going to square root all. So I've got y equals the square root of x cubed minus x squared. And I want to integrate between the uh, values of uh, minus 1 and 1. Okay, uh, don't get scared about this uh, square root because the first thing we have to do is uh, we have to times this by pi. So square root of x cubed minus x squared and then square it. Oh, I'm that space here. Uh, when you square it, or square it and square root, they cancel out and bring my pi over. So a pi of uh, minus 1 to 1 of just x cubed minus x squared. So I've squared it and times by 5. Now what I'll do is integrate this. Um, add that, so it's x to the power of 4 uh, divided by 4, and that's going to be x to the power of 3 uh, divided by 3, so a third. 
and we just got so we have integrated so now I've just got to put through to the values of minus one and one and let's uh, not forget our pi at the very end yeah, two cents. Use calculus to find the volumes of solid generates when the following curves are rotated through two pi radians through the y-axis and between the given limits. Give your answers to three significant figures. Okay, right, don't get worried about two pi radians, just, just a full term of 360. So the same rules apply, we'll just have to square it and times by pi. Uh, so I've got x equals uh, a square root of 1 minus 2y plus 3y squared. And so what I've got to do is I've got to times this by pi. 1 minus 2y plus 3y squared. Uh, square it, and I need to integrate that. They want it between the values of uh, minus 1 and a half. So I need to put a half up here and a minus 1 there. Uh, when I square it and square root of it, all of this cancels. I'm actually going to bring my pi out because it makes it a little bit easier for me to do it. So all I hear, I've just got 1 minus 2y plus 3y squared. And uh, I'm rotating this way around, so I'm, I'm, that's why I'm uh, integrating from x. Uh, same rules as before, so I'm going to work backwards for no reason. I'm going to add 1y to make it 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Good. This y becomes 2. Uh, 2 divided by 2 is just 1, but that's a minus 1. Uh, this is really x to the power of 0. Let's never forget that. So when you add that, you actually just get x to the power of 1 divided by 1 is x. Good. I need to do this between the uh, values of a half and minus 1. Sorry, that's not x, that's y. <laughs> I forgot what I was working with. Uh, so let's just substitute the values in. So I've got um, a half minus a half squared is a quarter, plus a um, half to the power of three is actually uh, one over eight, minus, uh, minus one, a uh, minus one squared is a, a positive one, so it's just, but we're already put a minus, so it just ends up being a minus one. Uh, minus 1 cubed is minus 1, so it's another minus 1. Okay. Now, so when I type all that into the calculator, I get uh, 27 over 8. Um, let's not forget our pi, so it's 27 over 8 pi. Um, the question is actually asking us uh, for three significant figures. So let's times this number by pi. Here's the STD. Here's got 10602. Uh, 123, so must be three significant figures is 10.6. Okay. Right, exactly the same. It's going to spun around two pi radians on the uh, uh, y-axis between the given limits. Uh, I'm going to do this one here. So x equals 2y to the power of minus 3 halves plus 4y uh, to the power of uh, 7 halves. Okay, um, so what we've got to do first is, okay, is we've just got to square it. 2y minus 3 halves a plus 4y, 7 halves, uh, times it by pi. Okay, um, now, obviously this does get a little bit confusing, so I'm going to actually do it a long way. So 3 halves plus 4y to the power of 7 halves. Um, just because it's a bit easier. Uh, 2y to the power of 3, minus 3 halves, times 2y to the power of minus 3 y. So 2 times 2 is 4. Right, uh, when you're times in your indices, you're actually adding them. So that's to the power of minus uh, 6 halves, okay, which is actually to the power of minus 3. Okay, um, 2y to the power of minus 3 halves times 4y to the power of 7 halves. A positive, 2 times 4 is 8. And then y, and you've got minus 3 halves plus 7 halves. Okay, which is halves, uh, minus 3 plus 7, or 7 minus 3 is uh, 4 halves. And we're doing the same here. Uh, I'm doing this 4y to the power of 7 halves uh, times exactly the same thing we just did, but 2y to the power of 3 halves, which is plus... Uh, 8y to the power of 4 halves. I oh, say this is clearly 2, and this is clearly 2 again. Okay, last one is 4y uh, to the power of 7 halves times 4y to the power of 7 halves. 4 times 4 is 16. Why? Uh, 7 and 7 is 14 halves, which comes down to 7. Okay, now I've got to see if I can put, any, I can put these two middle terms together, so let's just do it anyway. So we've got 4y to the power of minus 3, plus 8 plus 8 is uh, 16. Y squared. A plus 16y to power of 7. And now I've got to integrate this. And the limit here was actually from a square root of uh, 2 to 2. Uh, just a quick thing about which one's a big one, let's do. So square root of 2 to 2. Um, it never really matters if you mix them around, you just get a negative answer. So I have to add 1 and divide it. Uh, minus 3 added 1 is minus 2. 
4 divided by minus 2 is minus 2. Uh, 2 add 1 is 3. Uh, 16 divided by 3 is... Sorry, 16 thirds. Uh, 7 plus 1 is 8. Uh, 16 divided by 8 is 2. I think it's, uh, so that's all integrated. Uh, 2 to the square root of 2. Now we just got to substitute our values in. So it's minus 2, uh, which is 2 to the power of minus 2, plus 16 thirds, uh, 2 to the power of 3, plus 2, 2 to the power of 8. All of that minus and minus 2, square root of 2 to the power of minus 2, plus 16 thirds, uh, square root of 2 cubed, plus 2 square root of 2. Eight. Okay, type all that into your calculator. So uh, you get 1596.18. Um, the other thing you do when you type this in, you've got times it by pi, which I left all the way up there. It's quite uh, bad of me. Um, again, the question asks three significant figures. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, uh, so this one here I'll round up, which then actually makes this a zero, which then makes that a six, which makes that a one. So the answer is uh, 1600. Well, part three, I've got uh, x squared y cubed equals y cubed minus two. Uh, between uh, two and three, and I'm doing it by the y axis again, so I'm making my x a subject. So I'm going to divide everything by y cubed. So I've got y cubed divided by y cubed, and uh, minus two divided by y cubed. Okay, and this cancels out to become one, and that I'm just going to write it as one, two y to the power of minus three, because I can deal with that. And uh, this actually equals to x squared. So if I want to get rid of the squared, I have to keep root all of this. Okay, so because it's a rotation, I need to square it all and times it by pi. Square root of 1 minus 2y to the power of minus 3. And I know you might think, oh, uh, what's the point? What is the actual point of uh, squaring and square rooting? I just like to write it down because this uh, helps my working out. Uh, so my integral, I'm going to take my pi out. Okay, so I'll do 1 minus 2y to power minus 3. Okay, um, so 1 is obviously, technically it's 1 to power of minus, 1 to power of 0. So when I add 1, I just get y to power of 1. Okay, this one here, I'm going to have to add 1, which makes it a minus 2. And minus 2 divided by minus 2 actually just makes it plus 1. So I've got y uh, plus uh, y to power of minus 2. And uh, this is between limits of 3 and 2. So what I need to type into my calculator is 3 plus 3 to the power of minus 2 minus 2 plus 2 to the power of minus 2. And uh, don't forget, when I've done all this, I'm times this by pi. This is, uh, when you type all of that into your calculator, don't forget to times it by pi. You get uh, 31 over 36. Uh, turn it to a decimal because it wants to do the figures. 2.705. Two six sorry a one two three this five pushes up to make it a one uh, so it's two point seven one right the curve of the equation y equals two x minus x squared uh, which is this one here and the line of the equation a two minus x which is a straight line intersects point p uh, the finite region bounded by the x axis and the curve is on r this way to the right but find the coordinates of p that's just simultaneous equation so it's two x minus x squared. Um, equals 2 minus x. Uh, because they're both equal to y, I've just substituted them straight into straight away. Uh, so I'm going to bring my x over and my 2x over, which would be 2 minus x uh, plus x squared, because I'm bringing this over and uh, minus 2x, which gives me x squared minus 3x uh, plus 2. Uh, let's see if I can factorise this. It's nice, I can. So there's no messing around here. It's going to be uh, minus 2 and minus 1. So my x solutions are either going to be 2 or 1. Okay. Now if I look at this, you've got to think which one's more suitable. And uh, I thought about it for a while. But the key is here, I've got 2. So you've got to think this curve actually goes all the way around and matches it there. So it can't be 2, so it must be 1. Um, it asks for the coordinates, so I need to substitute back into one of the equations. It doesn't matter which one I'm doing it. So x equals 1. Uh, so let's do it for that one here. y equals 2 minus x. Y equals 2 uh, minus 1. So Y equals 1. So that's my two coordinates. 
I'm going to make it clear, x equals 1, y equals 1. Okay, calculate the volume of revolution when r is rotated uh, 360 around the x-axis, giving your answer in the form of k pi, where k is a rational number. Okay, so I'm going to have to split this diagram up and we'll split it straight down. Now, I can treat them both as uh, revolutions, but this shape here is actually going to be a cone. So um, I could uh, work out the uh, area, the volume of a cone if I wanted. But let's do the first bit first, which is uh, my quadratic part, 2x minus x squared. So to work out the volume of revolutions, I need to times it by pi and square it. Uh, so I'm going to leave pi for a bit, so I've got 2x minus x. And I always find it's good to do this when I'm squaring, just so I don't make any mistakes. Uh, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative x squared is negative 2x cubed. I'm um, doing the same, minus x squared uh, times 2x, which is another minus 2x cubed. Uh, minus x squared times minus x squared is positive x to the power 4. Uh, the squared x to the power 4. These two go together to be minus 4x to the power 3. Okay, good. And then um, I'm going to have to integrate this. I'm looking at my things, it's going to be from 0 to 1. Okay, so from uh, 1 to 0, and I bring my pi out. So when you're integrating, you add 1 and divide it. So it's going to be x cubed, it's going to be 4 thirds, and it's going to be x to the power 4. And 4 divided by 4 is 1, so I'm just going to leave it as x to the power 4. And this can turn to x to the power 5, I want nothing to, do, to divide it, so it's just going to be a fifth. Okay, put my box around, and uh, again it was from uh, 1 to 0. So I'm just going to substitute 1 in. So what 1 cubed is just actually going to be 4 thirds. That's going to be 1. It's going to be a fifth. Um, I'm not going to bother subtracting by 0 because I just don't want to. Uh, so I'm just going to use my calculator to do this. Uh, 4 thirds minus 1 plus a fifth. Which is the answers of uh, 8 over 15. Okay, that's one region. I'm going to save that answer for later. But of course I've got to times it by pi. Because you've got to times everything by pi, which I left out a little bit earlier. Now I have to consider my other heart part here, which is uh, the cone. I'm going to treat it as a cone because I'm getting bored of doing it the other way. So it's like a cone like that. Okay. Um, and that's like my axes. I know my radius is 1. So if I think about my volume of uh, shapes, I know it's going to be base, which is my pi r squared, uh, times my height, uh, divided by 3. Uh, so I know my, so it's going to be pi times 1 squared. Uh, my height is all the way along there, which is there to there. Okay, if I know that is point is 1, I know that that distance is 1 again. So it's just going to be times by 1, uh, divided by 3. Uh, all of this just becomes pi over 3. Pi over 3. Okay, I have to add the two numbers together. If you remember, it's actually uh, 8 over 15 pi plus... Uh, Pi over 3, or we'll treat it as third over pi. Uh, let's do it the wrong way. 8 over 15 pi plus, so this third, I'm going to have times by 5 to make 5 over 15 pi. Okay, easy, I'll keep my denominators the same. Um, 8 plus 5 is 13 uh, pi. And the question I think was actually asking us in terms of pi, uh, in terms of k pi, so k is going to be uh, 13 over 15. So the cross-section of static might is modelled by the equation of 4x squared. 4x squared equals y minus 1 to the power 4 from 0 to 1. Uh, let's get you to the right. Get this on there. Uh, by rotating the curve around the suitable axis, you just model to estimate the um, volume. Okay, so I need to make x a subject, but before I do, I'm going to get rid of this bit here. Um, so first of all, it's to the power of 4, so I'm going to square it and times it by itself. So the first one we'll do is going to do 1 minus 1 times y minus 1. Okay, y times y is y squared, uh, y times minus 1 is minus 1y, one uh, minus 1 times y is another minus 1y, and uh, positive 1, Okay, which is y squared minus 2y plus 1. Uh, now I'm going to have to square this again, so I'm going to times it by itself. Um, I could use binomial expansion to do this as well, but I'm not going to. Uh, so I've got y squared times y squared is y to the power of 4, y squared times minus 2 is minus 2y squared, and uh, y squared times positive 1 is a positive, so this is cubed, positive y squared, and I use my minus 2y, minus 2y times uh, y squared is minus 2y cubed, 
minus 2y times minus 2y is positive 4y squared and minus 2y plus 1 is uh, minus 2y and I'll use on to my 1 uh, 1 times y squared is y squared 1 times minus 2y is minus 2y uh, 1 times 1 is positive 1 now I need to add my plug terms uh, y to the power of 4 I've got no over there I'm going to cross it out because I've dealt with it uh, so I've got minus 2y cubed and another minus 2y cubed which makes minus 4y cubed I've got square, I've got a positive 1, a positive 4 and a positive 1 again which is positive 6y uh, squared um, it might be better to highlight these rather than crossing them out if you're on exam uh, minus 2y and minus 2y is minus 4y and uh, positive 1 is positive 1 okay. uh, but let's not forget this actually equals to 4x squared Okay, so um, to make x squared, I'm going to divide it all by 4. So x squared equals y4 over 2 minus, uh, so I'm dividing by 4, which is just y cubed, uh, plus 6 over 4 uh, y cubed. I don't know why it's 4 actually, it should be, it should be over 4. Uh, minus 4y four divided by 4, which is just minus 1, uh, plus a quarter. And um, you'd to get x to the subject, I'll just square root all of this. Now, uh, now I want to um, get a rotation. You've got a times it by pi, and then square it. Or well, times it by pi, my square root will disappear. Um, I want to do quite a stage. I'm actually going to take a uh, pi out, and I want to put it in square root one and two. Uh, so I've got a quarter y to the power of four minus y cubed plus uh, six quarters. I'm actually going to change to be three halves. Y squared and minus y plus quarter. I have to integrate all of this. <coughs> uh, so I've got y to the power of 5. A quarter divided by 5 is actually 1 over 20. Minus a y to the power of 4. Uh, which now divided makes it a quarter. Uh, cubed. Uh, so you've got 3 halves divided by 3 which is which is a half. Uh, so y uh, this becomes uh, to the power of 1. Now it becomes squared. Okay, which makes this a half minus a half and a quarter just turns into a quarter uh, y and I'm uh, integrating this between the, the values of uh, 1 and 0 uh, so I need to substitute all these values in um, I'm just going to substitute one value in because when I subtract it by 0 that term becomes 0 that term becomes 0 that becomes 0 that becomes 0 that becomes 0 so I've got 1 over 20 uh, 1 to the power of 5 is 5 minus a quarter, because 1 to the power of 4 is 4, plus a half, because 1 to the power of 3 is 3, minus a half, because 1 to the power of 2 is 2, uh, plus a quarter. And uh, this is all actually nice, because I've got a positive quarter and a negative quarter, I've got a positive half and a negative half, so I've got 1 over 20, all of this becomes. Uh, but don't forget here, um, I'm always times this by pi, so the answer is 1 over 20 pi. Uh, let me just check what it says. Uh, by right, given my to estimate a volume of the second might to three significant figures. Okay, now when I type this into the calculator, I've got 1 over 20 pi. Okay, I'm going to do STD, I've got 0 0.15707, which is to three significant figures. 1, 2, 3. This keeps it down. Command to 0 0.157. And my units was in metres, so it's going to be metres cubed. Right, bit of a nasty question. The cubic equation 3x cubed plus 6x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0 has the roots alpha, beta, gamma where alpha plus beta plus gamma equals minus 2 and alpha, beta, alpha, gamma, beta, gamma equals minus 2 thirds and alpha times beta times gamma is a third um, we're normally told to work this out but it's happy it's not done it the cubic equation w cubed plus p w squared minus 15w minus q equals 0 has roots 3a plus 1 so 3 alpha plus 1 3 beta plus 1 and 3 gamma plus 1 find the integers of a p and q All right so i'm still going to use the same equations that i always use which is the sum of the singulars for my second equation i'm sorry i'm not going to do it for the first because it's already done for me um is that uh, these three added together which is 3a plus 1 3 beta plus 1 and 3 gamma plus 1 yeah and this is going to equal to minus b over a uh, the sum of two, which is going to be three a plus one times three b plus one, and it's going to be plus three a plus one plus three gamma 
three plus one and the third one I've done is the plus three beta all right plus one times three gamma plus one okay this has got to be equal c over a okay and uh, let's do the third one which is sum of all three of them which is alpha beta gamma so that's got to be three a plus one because that's the alpha in that one and uh, three beta plus one and three gamma plus one and that's got to equal a b minus d over a uh, let's see if this helps us um a b c d well b is minus p so let's change that to minus p um minus 15 is c which might help us out and uh, d happens to be q uh, i'm going to focus on the first one so if i actually add these together i get three alpha plus three beta plus three gamma uh, plus three equals minus p over uh, a oh sorry actually no a is one so it's just minus p um if i factorize this i actually get three lots of alpha plus beta plus gamma plus three now alpha beta gamma was actually given to us in the question if we look up now uh, here it is alpha plus beta plus gamma is minus two so i can change this to three times minus two plus three must equal my negative p okay uh, three times two is minus six a uh, plus three is minus three so minus three equals minus p so p has to equal three I tell what p is now let's move on to the q out of all this horrible mess i've got one equation here that actually has q and uh it gets a lot worse because i now have to try and expand this and see if anything nice happens so i'm gonna get another piece of paper so let's expand the first bit 3a times 3b is a uh, 9 alpha beta 3a times 1 is plus 3 alpha so i keep on a uh good one times 3 beta is plus 3 beta uh one times one is one plus one I haven't done the first bit, 3v plus 1. And now I've got to expand this again. Be careful because there's a lot of terms. 9 alpha beta times 3 gamma is 27 alpha beta gamma. But we know what alpha beta gamma is, but we'll do that in a minute. 9 alpha beta times 1 is just 9 alpha beta. Done right now, 3 alpha. 3 alpha times 3 gamma is 9 alpha gamma. 3 alpha times 1 is 3 alpha. I'm going to do the 3 beta. 3 beta times 3 gamma is 9 beta gamma. 3 beta times 1 is just 3 beta. And let's do the 1. I've got plus 3 gamma uh, plus 1. Okay. And uh, this might seem a little bit horrible. But as I said, alpha beta gamma was in the question. So if you've got the question paper back down here, um, it told me that uh, alpha beta gamma was a third. So I can change this to be 27 times a third uh, 27 times a third uh, is 9 so that's 9 which is good um, I've got my plus 1 here so I'm just going to put a plus 1 don't have to do that anymore um, now I've got the two terms or three lots of two terms so I could consider that as 9 uh, alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma okay I'm putting boxes around these, otherwise I might try and use these again. Uh, I know alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma is back in my question, which is here. So this is really nine lots. So this is really minus two thirds. So that's really nine lots of minus two thirds. Nine times minus uh, two thirds, which is six. So a bit minus six. And here I've got three alpha, three beta, three gamma. Which I could think of it as three lots of alpha plus beta plus gamma. Uh, again, my question, alpha plus beta plus gamma is in minus two. So that's three lots of minus two, which is minus six again. So I've got nine plus one minus six minus six. Which is minus two. Um, you may have forgotten what these all equal. Uh, which is uh, Q. So minus two equals Q. But I remember this is actually minus Q, so it's minus 2 equals Q, Q equals 2. <laughs> the cubic equation, 27x cubed minus 54x squared plus 9x plus 10 equals 0, has the roots alpha, alpha minus 1, alpha minus 2, find the value of alpha. 
Right, so these are your normal roots, which are normally call alpha, beta, gamma. So just for the sake of it, I'm gonna put alpha does equal alpha. A beta is gonna equal alpha minus one. And a gamma is gonna equal alpha minus two. You have the same equations we normally do, which is uh, sum of your singulars, it's gonna be minus b over a. Uh, the sum of both two of them, it's gonna be alpha beta, which is a, b, c over a, and minus d over a. It's gonna be the sum of uh, all three of them. Um, now, we've actually got numbers we can sub into these. So these aren't unknowns, these are all whole numbers. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you do, but let's do the sum of singulars. So I'm gonna have to add them together. Alpha plus alpha plus alpha is three lots of alpha. Minus one minus two is minus three. So that's this, and I know it's gonna be minus b over a. Uh, a, b, so it's minus 54, but it's minus minus 54, which make it a positive 54 over a. A is 27. Uh, this gets even easier because 54 over 27 is actually 2. So we're 3 lots of that minus 3 equals 2. Now let's solve it. Plus 3 plus 3. And um, 3 lots of alpha must equal 5. So alpha's got equal 5 thirds. Hey, a stone mason, mason chisels a sculpture from a piece of rock. The shape of a sculpture is modelled by rotating the curved y squared plus the square root of x equals the cube root of x. Sketch to the right. Um, uh, from the x-axis from 0 to 1. Where each unit on the axis corresponds to 1 metre. Use integration to estimate the volume of the sculpture up to 3 significant figures. Okay, so a uh, fairly nice question to be honest with you. Uh, cube root of x, uh, because we go around the... Um, x-axis which is this way we need to make y the subject so first of all i'm going to have to uh, bring my x over so the cube root of x minus x squared and i know it seems silly but i always like to make uh, it properly the subject uh, by square root on both sides and i know it doesn't really matter because i want to square them in terms of by pi i just like doing it so because it's a revolution i have to square it in terms of by pi so when i square this the square root actually disappears it just gives me uh, so the cube root of x minus uh, x. Um, I want to bring my pi over. Um, I don't know the way this is written because I can't do the cube root when I integrate. So it's going to be x to the power of third minus x to the power of half. Okay, and I'm going to integrate this. Uh, and my values, if you look at this graph, uh, this was one, this was zero. So from one to zero. Uh, so uh, when I add one to three, this will make it three to four. Uh, four thirds, so I want to divide it, this is three quarters minus uh, X and when you add one to a half, it makes it uh, three halves, so it makes that two thirds. Bosh, bosh, I need this to the values of one and zero again because my second bit is a zero. I'm not actually going to do anything with that, I'm just going to focus on the first bit, um, which actually just gives me three quarters minus two thirds uh, because when I substitute one, I get the values. I'm going to use my calculator because I don't trust my uh, fraction skills at the moment. Was it it's three quarters? Minus two, minus two thirds, which equals one twelfth uh, pi. Uh, let me just double check. Question doesn't ask me significant figures or anything like that. Oh, it does. It says three significant figures. Days. I've already deleted from my calculator, which is nice. Uh, so it's one twelfth times pi, which is a. Uh, 0 0.2617, 1, 2, 3, the 1 keeps it the same. I'm oh, sorry, the 2 keeps it the same, so 0 0.261. Okay, the second part says that uh, uh, a stonemason carves a sculpture from a conical piece of rock with a radius of a 0 0.5 and a height of 1.5. Work out how much rock the stonemason carves away. Now, you might, I, you've got to think about your, your uh, gradient, but then I thought I don't need to. I just have to think about the uh, stone, which sort of looks like that. Okay, a radius of 0 0.5 is this, and uh, my height is uh, 1.5, and you've got to think back to your uh, GCSE, which is uh, my base, which is pi r squared times by height divided by a third. So the calculation I do is a third times pi times 0 0.5 squared times uh, 1.5. And it's giving me the whole volume of this entire cone. 
So it was a third times pi times 0 0.5 squared times a squared uh, times 1.5, which gives me 1 eighth pi. Okay, uh, but then we obviously this is the whole cone we want to subtract it by the previous answer, which was uh, 1 twelfth pi. So uh, 1 eighth pi, take away 1 twelfth pi, twelfth pi. So 1 eighth pi, take away 1 twelfth, no, 1 twelfth pi equals uh, 1 over 24 pi. Um, it wasn't specific in the question, but it did say three significant figures earlier, so I'm just going to continue that trend, uh, just in case, uh, 1, 2, 3, so 0 0.131. Okay, uh, my last part of the question is suggest a limitation for using this model to estimate these volumes. Um, I'm going to say that uh, when I rotate it, that's going to make it a uh, perfect uh, rotation. However, when it's a a stone mason is probably going to do little nicks here and there which is probably going to limit the volume or add a little bit more